It's time to hop back in our 66 Chevy Suburban and take another Louisiana road trip. Funding for this program was made possible by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting and by viewers like you. Thank you. Our next stop is New Orleans at a place many have called breathtaking and inspiring. It's time we visit the U.S. Freedom Pavilion at the National World War II Museum. After years of planning, the National World War II Museum in New Orleans recently unveiled the U.S. Freedom Pavilion, the Boeing Center, an incredible task that mirrored a monumental feat. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. It holds six World War II aircraft, a Sherman tank, and the stories of 436 National Medal of Honor recipients. The museum's president and CEO, Dr. Nick Mueller, calls it breathtaking and inspiring. You know, you, you don't really have much time to think about it when you're, uh, you're up to your keister and alligators trying to get it finished and getting all these planes up uh, in the middle of construction cranes going all around inside and outside. I mean, but man, the moment uh, it was done and you just said, this is astonishing. Among the aircraft includes My Gal Sal, a B-17 heavy bomber that crashed in Greenland during the war. The crew of 11 survived but the plane remained on an ice cap for over 50 years. The way they got off the ice cap after they crashed, they had to go and hacksaw off the uh, tips of the propellers sitting on the ice cap. This way they could run the engines and then power the radio. And that's how they got off the message so that they could be rescued a few days later. My gal Sal shares airspace with Lieutenant Colonel James Doolittle's B-25 that dropped bombs a stone's throw away from the Emperor's Palace. Roughly 1,000 African-American pilots known as the Tuskegee Airmen flew in a P-51 Mustang. The most famous of the pilots were the Red Tails, known for the distinctive markings of their planes. But as this overwhelming show of air support hangs above the visitors, the pavilion also recognizes a powerful ground game. Sitting next to a Sherman tank is Captain John Rogers, a tank company commander of the U.S. Army's 2nd Armored Division, also known as the Hell on Wheels Division. Captain John, how old are you? 95. That's not nice to lie. You're not 95. I'm not lying. I am born January the 20th, 1918. I swear. Captain John, a retired high school coach and teacher from Shreveport, volunteers at the museum and shares his World War II experiences with visitors to anyone who will pull up a seat. How are you? Hi, Sue. How are you? I'm good. And there are so many stories to tell. Six days after D-Day, five men, including Captain Rogers, rode in one of these Sherman tanks, drove towards Berlin, battled the enemy, and liberated European cities along the way. Oh, I had uh, my tank, which I named Excalibur, uh -huh. and uh, had my head out of that turret all the time. What in the world it feels like to ride and drive in a tank? It's loud. It's loud, and it is so cold in the winter because that engine just pulls all that cold air in. And sometimes it's 24 below zero in the bulge. And uh, in the summer, it's hot as Hades. Time spent with the World War II vets are cherished and captivating to anyone who spends a few minutes with them. And we had all these people, just ordinary people, you know, from here and there. And they come and we start talking and they just stay. They just stay. If they were on a tour, Find a tour guide to come and get them. Say, you've got time to go now. The next one you can't stay here, mm -hmm. and they they listened and absorbed everything that I said. You know, many will take a picture of Captain John or the other World War II veterans who serve as museum volunteers, who played a role in a monumental part of American history. No matter how long it may take us overcome this premeditated invasion. The American people in their righteous might 
will win through to absolute victory. I mean, to think of it from Louisiana's perspective, we are creating an epic campus on the story of World War II. This is the nation's Acropolis. That's what the Greeks built after the Persian Wars as a tribute to the magnificent achievement of the Greek democracies in defeating the mighty Persian Empire. Battle of Marathon, D-Day, the Battle of Hastings, the Battle of the Bulge, Midway, World War II is always, always going to be a great, great story of the 20th century and Western Civ, and it's right here in Louisiana. That's a big deal. That's the end of this road for now. Louisiana has so many great travel destinations to enjoy, so get on out there. And I hope to see you next time on my Louisiana travels. Maybe I'll see you out there. Funding for this program was made possible by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting and by viewers like you. Thank you.